Hey guys, Adam Trigger here, Wager Talk, back with another college basketball preview, 30 previews in 30 days. If you're new to this series, this is my preview. These are 30 teams that I went and saw in person last year. By the end of each preview, we're going to give you some actionable information as a way to play on or against or totals with each of these teams. We're doing one basically every day for the month of October, leading up to tip off on November 4th. And I've got a great special guest today. You guys probably know him. He's from the Three Man Weave. His name's Kai McKeon. He previewed this conference for Three Man Weave. So who better to help me talk about Colorado State than Kai? Kai, what's going on? And, and tell the people what you guys have been working on all summer. Yes, thank you, Trigger. I appreciate it. Uh, we are with The Burner now. That is Trilly Donovan's uh, Discord channel. We're trying to make it the best college basketball community on the web. Um, we are releasing all our previews there this season. Uh, did the Almanac the last couple of years. Before that, we released previews on our website, 3 man weavecom But now we are full partners with Trilly. Uh, we are riding all 364 teams. Like you said, Mountain West is out there now. We are rolling out conferences uh, pretty quickly over the next couple of weeks as we get closer to the season. But yeah, uh, excited as always for another college basketball season. Excited to talk some Mountain West. Yeah, and, and for you guys out there that are doing your own research on college basketball, that is as good of a publication, as good of a, a resource as you are going to find out there for the the entire, you know, kind of 364 teams. If you like the smaller conferences that are harder to find information in, like I, of course, do, uh, it's as good as it gets. It's super inexpensive. It will be your best tool throughout college basketball season, not just for the previews. The Discord is awesome. Once I figured out how to use Discord, uh, okay. it's really cool. There's so much info. And everyone should be checking that out. So one more time before we get into it, Kai, where can they find this? Yeah, if you want the previews themselves, burnerexclusives.com. Uh, that's the easiest way to access it if you're looking for previews. Uh, there is a, a link to the Discord in that. The Discord is like a, it's like a college basketball community. It's chat rooms, uh, basically. There's channels for Three Man Weave specifically. There's channels for every single team in the country, at least the big boys. Then you get into the, the mid-major conference channels. Uh, so... It's really a place to hang out and talk to diehard college basketball fans. There's going to be a betting channel in there as well that we will uh, spearhead this season. But the previews themselves will live at burner, burners, excuse me, burnerexclusives.com. Yeah, I've already been in there. It's awesome. They're fantastic. If you're looking for a full Mountain West preview, that's a great place to go. Uh, but these are my team-specific previews. So we are talking Colorado State today, Kai. Uh but I will say this, 2023 was a banner year for the Mountain West. Um, so when I'm looking at a sixth-place finish for Colorado State last year, um, that's nothing to scoff at there with, with how good this conference was. At least at the top half of the league, those top six or seven teams were all sort of neck and neck. I mean, really, this last year, Colorado State had one of the best teams they've had in probably the last two or three decades. So my first question for you here. It is kind of like one that I, I, you know, with all the movement we see in college basketball, and then, of course, a, a talent in Isaiah Stevens graduating and, you know, being one of the best players in the history of the program, really. Mm -hmm. Why is Nico Medved still here? And how important is them is that for this Colorado State team coming into this season? Yeah, and you mentioned they finished sixth. They were third in Kempom in the league. So they're really better than their standings uh, uh, even suggested. And it was his best Colorado State team somehow. Uh, during his tenure, he moved up quick. He he started at Furman, you know, not too long ago, probably about a decade ago. Had that one season at Drake, and then he took the Colorado State job. I would not be surprised if he takes another bigger job soon. Uh, what that job might be, maybe it's like a Utah, something like that, if it happens to open up. Uh, but he is on the short list for uh, power leagues looking for new coaches. He, I think, he's brilliant. Um, he, he's done a fantastic job. And and though they did lose Stevens, who. <laughs> You mentioned one of the best players in, in program history. He's the all-time leader in games played, points, assists, and I think steals as well. Um, despite his loss, I still think this will be a really competitive team. Yeah, you know, as we're, we're going to build to a sort of, you know, kind of outlook for the team going into the season, I'll, I'm going to try to give an idea of what I'm going to try to do with the team. And, and some of these teams, I have a good idea of like, okay, this is a team I'm definitely targeting to play on. This is a team I might target to play against. Obviously, you know, pace, if, if, if you can find a good in a couple of these last year, we had great, like, opinions on over-under type teams. This is a team where 
I don't know if I'm totally down to bet on this roster right now, but I know mm. without a doubt I like to bet on Nico Medved. He's just, it's just an incredible coach. And again, getting him back for year seven when Stevens was on his way out, and, and now you know the status of this league, this is probably the the last year of the Mountain West as we know it. You can thank football for that. But like yeah. it, it's it's massive for Colorado State, in my opinion, to have him back his ability to game plan, his ability to coach defense. I guess that's where we'll start. Like this was a really good defensive team last year, and I could see them being outstanding defensively again this year. Maybe some questions on the offensive side of the ball. So let's start in the backcourt because I think they could still be a pretty good defensive backcourt. But talk to me about like where the points are coming from and who might take Steven's place as the, the guy that can stir the drink, if you will. Yeah, that's kind of the issue. They they don't really have a, I would say a true point guard right now, at least an obvious one. Bowen Bourne comes in from Northern Iowa, and he's fantastic when he's healthy. Uh, he had a down year last year because he was dealing with injuries the entire season. Uh, but when healthy, he can really score. Is he better off the ball? Most likely. Um, you know, he is pretty small. I, I wouldn't let that fool you. He, he's he's small. He does not look like he can play basketball at the D1 level, but. Rest assured, he is really good. Um, and again, if he is fully healthy, those shooting numbers will go back up. So the problem is pure point guard play. They brought in Ethan Morton from Purdue. We know Purdue kind of used him as a primary ball handler. Um, didn't work out too great for them. However, he comes from that winning program. He brings that championship caliber uh, uh, experience to the forefront. Maybe that's a nice change of pace guy they can put at the point. He's six seven, so defensively, I think, uh, to your point, that that makes them still tough on the perimeter. Uh, and then Keyshawn Williams comes in for NIU, kind of a forgotten guy. Once again, kind of like Bourne, when healthy, he is really good. Averaged 18 points a game two years ago, uh, was hurt most of the year last season. So it's kind of a roll the dice sort of situation for Medved in the backcourt, banking on guys getting healthier and banking uh, banking on sort of a point guard by committee type of thing. Yeah, and if there's a guy that can handle that i'll go back to just you know obviously i've made it clear that medved's a coach i've really liked over the years but i mean if you you know kind of watch this colorado state team the last couple of years kai you know there's there's wins that stand out like two years ago i think they knocked off saint mary's and you know he kind mm -hmm. of medved had a great game plan to play that style and then of course in mountain west play last year um you know having to play san diego state one night and new mexico the other um, you know, just night after night, the different styles of play, Utah State, and deal with like a, a serious front court right there. Uh, the, there was never really a, a game plan that he didn't have in his bag. His teams move the ball extremely well. So, you know, I, I guess the, the next step here is how much of that is the guys that were on the floor last year for Colorado State, and how much of that is just hit him, his ability to game plan and put guys in situation to succeed? Because I, I think that's going to go a long way into – kind of telling us what, you know, what we can expect from this team this year. Yeah, I, I do give him a lot of credit. Um, on the offensive end, he it's a motion offense, tons of cutting. Uh, his teams are always ranked pretty highly in assist rate, so they do it with the pass versus the dribble. To your point, Isaiah Stevens was there for five years. Uh, he was the driver of that. But I, I still think Medved is a good game planner, can work around that, especially with a full offseason. Without Stevens, you kind of have that plan going in. We've seen in the past him play through undersized postman they have one in Jalen Crocker Johnson coming in from Little Rock uh, Ohio Valley freshman of the year he's going to be that undersized five guy uh, that Colorado State can play through on the block I think it's a really good option for them and then if you want to pick out sort of playmaker best player type of guy on the team it's Neek Clifford uh, he did enter enter his name into the NBA draft this past offseason ended up coming back out former Colorado transfer, I believe, but he had a really great season last year. Uh, we'll see what he does with a bigger uh, usage load this year, presumably, but I think he's really good. Uh, great shooter, very efficient, great rebounder for his size too. Yeah, no, it's, it, it's going to be really interesting to see how this roster sort of gels together. Uh, of course, you know, Steven's not being there it is huge, but again, uh, that's kind of where my, you know, I, I guess that the challenge I have, with, with trying to gauge this team this year. And we'll get to that co non-conference schedule. Um, you know, it, we'll get to it in a minute. But it is some of the inexperience, I guess, specifically in the front court. Kai, does it look like this team's going to play smaller than Colorado State teams in the years past? Or are, are you worried about sort of that, that front court size at all when you look at this roster? 
Yeah, it seems to be kind of his MO, like like even going back to uh, uh, David, uh, what's it? Uh, David Roddy, right? Those teams, we kind of played mm-hmm. the five at Deshaun Thomas, that team as well. But even last year, they were playing a 6-8 center most of the time. That's going to be the case again. Crocker Johnson, uh, Rashawn Mbembe, probably saying that name wrong. He's going to rotate in the front court as well. Uh, but they have really good perimeter size. I, I mentioned Clifford, 6. Morton coming in 6-7. Jalen Lake is back. He's 6-4. Keyshawn Williams is 6'4". So really, Bowen is Bowen Bourne is the only small guy that's going to get a lot of playing time this season. So I think uh, they're, they're set up in pretty good shape in that regard, uh, outside of the five having pretty good size. You bring in an LIU guy too, a, a guy from your more neck of the woods, uh, Adam, but I, I, I don't think he's going to get a ton of playing time. No, I, I was going to say that's that's someone I've watched kind of closely. You know, being in the NEC, it's it's one of my mm-hmm. the conferences I follow up here. We have a, a, a local team in Lemoyne and Syracuse, and and so I've I actually got to uh, LIU will be part of the preview at, at one point. I got to see them play a couple times last year, which is always an adventure if you haven't seen <laughs> Long Island play basketball. But I guess the the point I'll make there is like he's probably the the biggest guy on the team, and from from a height perspective, yeah. at six mm-hmm. eleven. But yeah, I don't. I don't see that translating to Mountain West. Like I felt like at times he was a little clumsy on the floor. I thought he, you know, in NEC play, he took advantage of just being big. You know, you look yeah. in that conference, not a not a ton of of size and not a ton of quality size. And so, yeah, I guess when I look at concerns for this team, um, the two that come to mind are the interior of, of you know the the size down low and, and the interior being able to to defend size, and then you know, scoring because like as much as Medved, as gr- as good as Medved is, is as a coach, you still have to have the guys that put the ball in the basket. And, you know, you lose Stevens, who was just someone that you could rely on, super consistent. I think Cartier is, is gone from last year's team. And, mm-hmm. you know, you're going to ask a lot from late. He's a really good shooter, but, you know, is he someone that is going to be relied upon on a night in and night out basis to go and put in, you know, put 15 to 20 points up because that would be a jump from his productions in previous years. So uh, I guess those are the question marks for me, me personally looking at this team as we get into like, you know, how, how to, to kind of, you know, I, I'm going to bring up the schedule in a second as we get into the kind of how to break down and maybe how to play this team. Sorry, I just tripped over my words there. <laughs> you know, are, are those concerns for you? And, um, you know, kind of what are you looking at in that regard? Well, yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head of <clears throat> what the concerns would be. It would be who takes over, you know, late in the game. Uh, they have, uh, like I said, Clifford's probably your number one option there. Maybe it's Bourne or Williams. They're healthy, but I think the real key is health in the backcourt as well. Um, I translate into the Mountain West play. I'm not super worried about Bourne just just being in the Missouri Valley for many years. Like he's tougher than he seems given his size. Um, Frontline size again. They've gotten away with it so many years, and Crocker Johnson is uh, long enough to kind of man the middle, despite being six foot eight. So I'm not as concerned about that. Um, more so, just just how this team looks out of the gates without Stevens. Again, they had the whole off season. It's still a concern. I, I would probably, if I had to lean one way or the other, I'd probably focus more on conference play if you want to back this team. Starting off, maybe non-con, it could take a bit to get rolling. We'll say. Yeah, and so I, I apologize for like fumbling over my words there for a second, but that's kind of like you know that that's how like college basketball handicapping is because I've got I've got thirty of these previews to do. Some of them I'm doing back to back. Some of these teams I, I really have like strong opinions on, and others. And I would mm-hmm. say this Colorado State team for me it is a little bit of like wait and see, you know, kind mm-hmm. of maybe watch them a little bit early and, and try to gauge, you know, what what exactly to expect now. With that being said, Kai, I do think the early portion of the schedule, if you look at like, you know, North Dakota, Tennessee State, Denver, UC Riverside, those are all home games early, all of which that I think they could be a pretty substantial favorite. Mm -hmm. Uh, I kind of like wouldn't mind maybe taking a shot against this team in the early going. You know, I'll be interested to see how the market gauges this team. They've got to go to old uh, to down to Mississippi and play Ole Miss on a neutral. They then have to go to a uh, – they, they then play in an MTE where they're probably going to see Washington and either TCU or Santa Clara. Those I could see being pretty challenging games for this team, especially if their offense looks a little bit jo- disjointed in the early going. 
But I'm kind of with you. I, I think you're going to have time to gauge during conference, you know, to up to conference play. Um, mm-hmm. You know what exactly how you want to play with them. But I, I guess my the question that I kind of have is how do you think the market is going to view this team? Because they obviously are coming off of one of their highest finishes that they've had in Ken Palm. Like, do you think they're going to be perceived as a as what last year's Colorado State team was by the market, or is it like are you going to have some playing on them? That's what I really couldn't figure out when I was looking at this, you know, profile here. If I had to wager, I, I would say that people would be more down on this team uh, heading into next year because of the Stevens loss and and the other guys you mentioned, Cartier with Joel Scott as well. They really only bring back two major contributors from last year, and, and it was Lake. And then Clifford Clifford's their main guy, but with bringing in guys who, you know, frankly, the counting stats do not jump off the page for some guys they brought in because they get, they, they barely played last year. Bourne didn't play much. Keyshawn Williams didn't play at all. If you're looking at counting stats and not knowing really the, the true nature behind Keyshawn Williams, situation, and even Ethan Morton, when he barely got on the floor for Purdue last year, you might think, who are these guys coming in? These guys averaged 1.6 points per game. You know, I, that would, Probably, if we're talking like the simplest, straightforward handicap, would think, okay, Colorado State's a bit down this year. You know, I think this team's floor is fairly stable. To your point, I think the ceiling might be a little limited. So if you think in terms of like, I might like this team as a dog better than I would like them as a big favorite, they might get some pretty big spreads, like you said, early on against some of those teams coming into Colorado State. Uh, might be a little hesitant depending on the opponent, the opponent to back them. Like the UC Riverside game to me screams UC Riverside. Um, but yeah, I, I think the floor is fairly stable. We'll see about the ceiling, uh, through non-con. Yeah. They have an interesting game with VCU on a neutral floor. Uh, I believe that's in Vegas somewhere, or maybe in uh, a dollar loan in Henderson, Nevada. That's going to be an interesting one. Uh, but you know, going into conference play though, I think the point needs to be made that the mountain West has definitely taken, taken a step back collectively from like what mm-hmm. those top six or seven teams were last year. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of like. You know, I, I may look to fade this team out of the gate, but if, if if it looks like Medved has, you know, put his touch on this team, maybe maybe as they start to play some of the name teams, they, they might be a play on if, in fact, you know, the market has kind of, uh, I guess, abandoned them just because of, like, no Stevens and a couple of guys, you know, gone from last year. All right, that is the conclusion of our Colorado State preview. Again, this is just, you know, some of these I'm going to have really, like, big opinions on, other ones – like Colorado State, they're they're a puzzling team, and and I'll be kind of looking to, you know, watch them in the early going, try to formulate a better opinion. I will say this though that that four pack of games that are that are home games for them in November, and I think you said the Riverside one. There's going to be an opportunity in there to probably take the points with a mm-hmm. dog, and, and you'll just have to figure out which of those four that you like the best, and obviously like what the number is going to be. But I, I can just about guarantee that North Dakota. Tennessee State, Denver, UC Riverside. Those are all within the first like 14 days of the season. All home games where Colorado State is going to be probably a substantial favorite. There's definitely going to be an opportunity to fade them, in my opinion, in that window. So this was Colorado State. Kai, one more time, uh, just throw the handles up there and let the people know where they can find your stuff. Yeah, Three Man Weave is at 3MW underscore CBB on Twitter. Uh, again, our previews can be found at burnerexclusives.com. And you can find me at Wager Talk. You can find me on Twitter and all social media platforms at Adam Trigger WT. And go over to the Wager Talk YouTube channel. We've got 30 of these previews, 30 different teams. We're doing them all October until there's 30 in there in a playlist. So check the, check out all the different teams we have in there and head on over to wagertalk.com to find all of my picks.